you have made it to part three of Lori and Gary's cruise on the Emerald Princess. Good morning from Halifax and a ship tour. The Emerald Princess has 18 decks. I'm starting at the top for you all and then slowly making my way down. While I'm walking you around the ship, I also thought we could go over a couple of topics that I haven't talked about yet. Topic number one, what is a princess medallion? If you've never cruised with Princess Cruise Lines before, the medallion is essentially your key card and a tracking device while you're on the ship. I know some cruisers say it makes them feel spied on and uncomfortable. Gary and I say it makes life super convenient and easy. The ship can give you room service anywhere you are on board. Your stateroom door opens for you hands-free. And when we cruised Princess with family, we knew when family was on the way to dinner. So that is what the medallion is. Love it or hate it. They give it to you on a little lanyard-like necklace. We bought those little watches that you've been seeing us wear in our past two videos. The only things we personally dislike about the medallions is we display all of our cruise key cards on our refrigerator and the medallions just look a little different. They give off a different aesthetic, but you know what? We'll deal with that. And while I've been discussing the medallions with you, I've been showing you the sanctuary portion of the ship. It is an adults only area and the pool portion any adult can use. This upper portion that I'm showing you right now with the covering, um, that is an extra pay. And I'm going to speed this portion up, but I just want to say we definitely would have used the sanctuary if there had been more sea days on this cruise. But being on land almost every single day, we were just running around like crazy. Right now, I am on deck 16 near the fitness center at the front of the ship. And before this video is over, I also wanted to mention our disembarkation at the Brooklyn Cruise Terminal. I didn't take any video footage of it because I had all my luggage with me and it was horrible. But first of all, as much as I am loving Princess Cruise Lines, I do not like their disembarkation process. I remember this from our last cruise with them too. They tell you, go meet wherever at a certain time. So not exit the ship at a certain time, but go meet in a restaurant at a certain time. So Gary and I hung out in our stateroom for as long as we could, but then it was finally really time to go to our meeting point. So we had to wait 10 minutes for an elevator. And as soon as we got to the restaurant, they were like, okay, it's your time to disembark the ship. Go disembark. Then we had to wait another 10, 15 minutes for an elevator. And I was like, there must be a better way, princess. So we ended up getting off the ship 20 minutes before our car service was supposed to meet us. It's really hard to time everything out perfectly. And there was space inside, but we were screamed at and told we had to go wait outside. And it was torrential rain, you guys. I mean, this was basically a rainstorm that was later declared a state of emergency in New York City. So either Princess Cruise Lines or Brooklyn Terminal, they need to figure something out because it's not like all of the indoor space was crowded and being utilized. They just didn't want you in there. Woo, glad I got that off my chest. Here we are in the fitness center and I talked about the fitness classes a lot in my other two videos. I mentioned how I thought it was really unfair that you don't get unlimited fitness classes with Princess Plus anymore and that the cost for extras is now $30 for a 30 minute class. But I was able to take four classes, two were mine. I was able to use Gary's two classes and they were great, super fun. I did the pure bar, Pilates, yoga, not quite as challenging as if you were to take a New York City pure or Pilates class. But I really liked the instructors and I liked being able to take a fitness class and feel like I was doing something to combat all the thousands and thousands and thousands of calories I ate on this cruise. So we are by one of the two pool areas on the upper deck. And again, look at all this seating, you guys. I cannot with Princess. They have so many chairs. So the Emerald Princess 
can hold a capacity of 3,080 passengers. At least that's what Wikipedia says. And if you watched our Celebrity Summit video, we met the hotel manager the first day and he goes, oh, this ship holds so-and-so amount of passengers, but don't worry, we're dispersed so evenly. And that was not true. I always felt super crowded in on the Celebrity Summit, but on the Emerald Princess, I felt like there was just so much empty space all the time. This ship just has a great layout, although I did get lost a lot. Also, I had no idea any of this was up here until I took this video. I'm not even sure the pot pot was open. I never saw it advertised in our little cruise leaflet because Gary and I love our miniature golf. So I believe this would be considered deck 17, the sports deck. And you guys, don't take my word as gold for everything. I filmed this now two weeks ago, and like an idiot, I did not say it into my camera. So I'm just going by memory. But here we have visual proof that we are on deck 15 in the back by the buffet. So overall consensus of the buffet was the food quality was pretty good. The buffet was never fully open, and I think this is just a trend on all ships because I haven't sailed on a ship where the full buffet, every single station, has been open both sides or whatever in, well, basically since before the pandemic. The good thing about this buffet is while the food station was mobbed they did open up the seating on the empty side so there was always plenty of seats as long as you walked around to the side that was not open we basically just worked our way through one side of the buffet and then made our way into the first pool area and again with princess there are two main pool areas then there is that third adults only pool area near the sanctuary and then there is a fourth pool area which is also adults only on the back of the ship it's glorious you guys it is glorious if you can't find room by one pool chances are you'll be able to find room at another here is the second main pool area and i'm trying to circle the perimeter of the ship so that's what we're doing here on this deck and by this pool area, there was the Salty Dog Snack Place, not to be confused with the restaurant we went to in our previous video. Here is the menu. The glare makes it hard to read. But let me tell you, they had burgers, hot dogs, and my absolute favorite, tacos. I got those for lunch almost every single day because there was no wait for them. I didn't have to subject myself to the crowded buffet, and they were so good. So I'm assuming I went through the inside area at this point and I'm circling back to the buffet. We are approaching the upstairs coffee, ice cream, and pizza station. It is called Cups and Cones. And we found ourselves getting most of our latte drinks up here instead of downstairs at the International Cafe just because it had less of a line for coffee drinks. That wasn't necessarily the case on our Caribbean Princess Cruise, probably because the weather was slightly milder here. So in the morning when we went to get coffee, it could be a little chilly. And I don't really eat pizza, but Gary did get a couple of slices of the pizza and he said it was really good. And he has been a New York City dweller for about 30 years. So I think you can trust his pizza ratings. We've made our way back into the other side of the buffet. Clearly, this is the side that was open. And I'm sorry I never really officially filmed the food for you. The buffet was always crowded, whether we were in port or at sea. Again, mainly because there was only the one side open to get the food at. Before we leave the buffet, I just want to say... Unlike Celebrity, they did have shellfish options every day and the last day they had sushi sushi so i'm gonna give the buffet eight out of ten stars which is probably 
just about the highest rating I've ever given a buffet before in my life because if you know me, you know I just hate the buffet in general. So also at night, a portion of the buffet turned into other casual dining restaurants. One night it would be a restaurant called Planks, which was barbecue. And the other night it would be a place called Steamers, which was seafood. And I am really disappointed because I missed the boat on making a reservation for both of these places and we never got to go. We even tried to go last second and they were like, no, we're full go away. I mean, they weren't that mean. They were nice, but they said basically there was no way we were getting a table. So if you go on the Emerald Princess and you want to make a reservation there, do it the first second you step on board the ship. Here's the back of the ship. Love this pool. There's a bar back there. Love the bar. Also love watching all the sailaways from this area. It's supposed to be adults only. There was a child there our first day. No one did anything about it. And I'm finding this to be a trend on all of our cruises. If there's a solarium on your ship and there are kids running rabid, the crew is not going to do anything about it. I don't know if they're just understaffed or they're just not allowed. But going forward, and this is not just for Princess, this is for every single cruise line. Going forward, please, cruise lines, you say you have an adult-only area. Enforce it! Luckily, on this cruise, there were hardly any children to begin with. So not a major problem, but I just had to vent. This is Sabatini's. We were just in the outside area of Sabatini's. Now we are in the inside area of Sabatini's. Princess has two specialty dining restaurants, Sabatini's and the Crown Grill. We went to Sabatini's on our Caribbean Princess cruise and we had a really bad experience. That being said, it could have been a one-time thing, but obviously we were not going to pay extra again after that. Here is the menu for you to view if you want to pause it. But yeah, I do know lots of people love Sabatini's. For us, we loved the appetizers. It was just the time it took for them to serve us. It was almost three hours and our main courses all came out cold from the one time we went. But if you had a good Sabatini's experience, please let us know in the comments below. So now we skipped all the floors with cabins and we made our way down to deck seven. Obviously we were at port right now, so all the shops were closed. But normally this is a little kiosk where you can buy little jewelry to hold your medallions, watches, nicer necklaces. And then this area is the photo gallery area. And even though Princess has a great app, they still do the photos old school. So to my right, uh, on the walls, they open up and they put the hard copies of the photos there for you to select from. Some of the photos would appear in your app too, but some wouldn't. It was really weird. Here is the Crown Grill, which is the pay for steakhouse on the ship. We went here as well on our Caribbean Princess cruise and we did like it, but we weren't blown away. And since the main dining room food on Princess is so good, we decided to skip it this time. Here is the menu for your viewing pleasure pause, screenshot, do what you got to do. I'm speeding through the rest of the photo area just because it was so big. I guess you have to be big if you're going to have hard copies of everything. To the left of me is the Explorer's Lounge and I'm walking on to the promenade of the ship. I feel sad. I did not utilize this space enough on this cruise. It's beautiful. Making my way back inside and we wind up again on deck seven of the main atrium area. On this floor, we have some shops. This is a makeup shop with a lot of perfume. And let's slow everything down to take in the view. Lots of events happen down there during the day. Musicians, trivia, all of the above. Speeding up again, we have a little bar area. And then we make our way into the hallway where we run into the library. 
This was a really pretty library, lots of board games to select from if that's your thing. Back in the hall, we have a rogue jewelry shop on the right and then the Salty Dog Gastropub on the left. And then there is the theater entrance. We just walked down a flight and we're making our way back from the theater and we have to go through the casino here. So Gary and I do not gamble. And if you've ever seen our videos before, we rate the casino over how easy it is to walk through. So you can see right now, there's wide spaces between all the tables and the slot machines. So we are gonna rate this a 10 out of 10. Oh my God. As you exit the casino on deck six, you end up passing another shop and we're gonna walk through an elevator area to get to the other side of the atrium where there are, yes, more shops. And to feel pretty, let's take the main staircase down to go to deck five. As soon as you walk down the stairs, you run into the internet cafe and if anyone was wondering about Wi-Fi speeds on the ship, if you had asked me a year ago, I would have said, oh, they're great, so fast. But Gary and I were spoiled with Starlink on our last cruise, and compared to Starlink, it was awful. One evening, it took me about two hours to upload a two-minute TikTok video. So it was good Wi-Fi for two years ago, but it's terrible Wi-Fi for current Wi-Fi standards. Here we are in the Park West Art Gallery, which was huge. It veered off into two different directions. And what we liked about this art gallery is we could walk through it, view everything, but we never felt hassled by the staff. So way to go, Emerald Princess Gallery staff. Thank you for giving us our space. They say not to buy paintings on a cruise ship, but we have bought three over the years and I love them. I stare at them every day. Not sure if they're worth anything, but we didn't pay too much. So I say art is subjective. Buy it if you love it. And finally, we have made our way to deck five and the international cafe always packed but for good reason. They had great snack food, open 24 hours. They also made all of your coffee drinks there as well. And of course, great place to sit and watch any events that may be going on in the atrium area. You also have the Good Sports Bar. And also on deck five and six, there were two main dining room areas. And finally, after filming all morning, we are getting off in Halifax, Canada. In part one and two of our Emerald Cruise videos, we said this was the only cruise we've ever been on where we did not purchase a single excursion. And since this is our final port, let me tell you, we do not regret that decision. Now, if we do this route again, we will probably get excursions for Boston and St. John. But overall, every port just has so much to do right there and Halifax was no exception. They had this huge boardwalk. It was maybe a mile long. There were restaurants, museums, shops. I could tell they were building even more. In this video, you can see all the construction in the distance. So we decided to make our way to the Maritime Museum, which has a Titanic exhibit. So I did not know this, but basically Halifax was where they collected all the dead bodies from the Titanic. That sounds so sad and morbid. So a lot of the exhibit was composed of real artifacts originally taken from the wreckage. In addition to the Titanic exhibit, the museum had lots of other areas about maritime history. Definitely worth checking out. In the back, there was also an old wartime ship that you could go on. And it was at this point I decided I was hungry and I absolutely had to have oysters in my belly before this cruise was over. We found this huge restaurant directly off the promenade and I'm ashamed to say I did not get the name. I got fried scallops, Gary got fish and chips, and then of course I got my oysters and I ate almost all of those those are just for me you guys those are just for me 
bellies full, we made our way back onto the ship. There was a huge line. Also, I didn't film it, but there were loads of shops in the actual terminal, so you can get gifts there. And then we watched Sail Away from our balcony. And let me tell you guys, there is nothing more depressing than sailing away from your last port on your cruise vacation. Another topic I wanted to discuss before this vacation is over is people asked me if I saw fall foliage. So we went mid-September. The trees were still green, but the weather was mid-70s every single day. I'm telling you guys, I would rather take warmer weather over an orange leaf any day. But if fall foliage is your thing, I highly recommend you wait and go in October. Back to the main dining room for dinner, and then it was time to go see another show. This was the last full production show. This was our least favorite show. It was soul music themed. And it was enjoyable, but just not our favorite. So if you're looking for a production show to skip, this would be the one. We are now on our last full day of the cruise. It's a sea day. I started my day off with yoga class. Gary slept in, of course. And then I decided to get one more specialty dessert for breakfast. And I had full on plans to skip lunch and wait to eat again until dinner, but this was the day they had sushi at the buffet, so I had a full-on plate of sushi, which we ate by the back pool. Yummy. All right, Gary's about to dig into the pizza. Oh, baby. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Cruising. That's where it's at. Now, you're, you're a true New Yorker. I mean, not really. <laughs> Been there for 30 years. Okay. So, so how does it compare to New York pizza? <laughs> That's the same. Wow. Yeah. There you have it first, ladies and gentlemen. Healthy. What makes yours healthy, baby? It must suck not to be me. Is that a pineapple? It's a pineapple. It's all healthy. <laughs> we spent the rest of the afternoon by the pool. Sorry, I only got this vertical footage of it. And then it was time for our last dinner. And even though it was not a formal night, I had to dress up for the last meal. I love wearing my tacky LED sneakers. The last evening, the main dining room staff always does a little parade. And then for our last meal, we both started with the seafood ceviche. What'd you get, baby? A poached egg on something, I forgot what it was, but it looks wonderful with hollandaise sauce on it. Tonight, my second appetizer is the pumpkin turnip soup. So let me try it. Uh, I think it's supposed to taste a little bit like butternut squash soup, so let's see. What do you think, babe? It does, it tastes exactly like butternut squash soup. Great. Good. Good, good. I have bacon wrapped meatloaf. What'd you get, Gary? It looks good. Prime rib, medium rare. Dig in, baby. The last morning. I woke up at 6 a.m. and this was the line to get a coffee drink. I persevered and stayed on it. I needed to milk my free coffees on the Princess Plus package for all it was worth. Then we had our last meal. I already told you about the disembarkation process. So I'm just going to say now, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe button with the notification bell on. In February, we are going on a 10-day celebrity cruise from Athens, Greece to Egypt and Israel. You do not want to miss that. So please subscribe. Also, if you want to check out our previous Princess Cruise video, you can hit the link in the box above. Until the next time, happy cruising, y'all.